Blessings and namaste. Thank you for joining me for this video that is dedicated to people that are sitting in a chair a lot. So we're going to call it chair yoga and there is a thing called chair yoga. And this is all about breaking up your habits of how you sit in the chair and using the chair as a prop to take some stretches and take a break out from your normal patterns and habits of sitting and typing or designing or whatever it is that you do. So to begin with, I'd like you to close down your eyes and tune into your seat bones. So tune into the way your left and right bum bum cheek are sitting onto the chair. You might be someone that leans. I naturally, or my habit is to lean on one leg when I sit, so I always need to correct it with the other, but we're not always aware that we're correcting it or that we're, we've got that habit. So just tuning in to the weight of your left hip and bum bum cheek and your right hip and bum bum cheek on the chair and notice where your muscles are gripping and holding. So where is your natural pattern when you're sitting on the chair? And then I'd like you to find evenness across the seat bones. So equal weighting across the left and the right side of the hip. And then taking a gentle lean forward and a gentle lean back and feeling into the way your spine is stacking up from the hips. Maybe you even rock from side to side and try and find that sweet spot where you're directly in the center of your gravity your spine is stacking like Jenga blocks up from the hips all the way to the back of the skull and the skull itself. So you want the whole body feeling like it's supported and perhaps you feel even a gentle squeeze in your core muscles to keep you there. You may even feel your quads or your hamstrings holding you there or your glutes. Just noticing what holds your support structure here and try to make it even and relaxed. And now that our base is good and the feet are about hip width apart on the ground and you need to be touching the ground fully with your feet. So if you're someone that your legs are shorter than the chair, then perhaps you have, I'm going to use a block here, perhaps you have a block or something else that you can be on so that you can feel the feet on a surface. And then from here, we're going to do some simple shoulder awakenings. So rolling the shoulders backwards three times and then forwards three times. And then relax. And then with the neck stretching, which we're about to do, I'd like you to really listen to how I'm instructing you. So we're going to gently tilt our ear towards, so our left ear towards our left shoulder. Now most people when they do neck stretches you'll see them go and yank over this way and yank over that way but all that's doing is aggravating the neck muscles. What we want to do is invite the neck muscles to release and to invite the release we gently take that ear over so the left ear to the left shoulder not the chin the ear and then let it happen so let the release happen naturally. So breathing, taking several long breaths and allowing gravity to stretch the neck muscles because the neck muscles, although we use them and rely on them all the time, they're not actually super strong. So we want to be able to release the fascia, the connective tissue and the muscle gently and gently coming up to the center and then over the other side. We want to invite the release rather than pushing and forcing because as soon as we push and force, the body resists and it grips and it just causes more stress and pain. So this is really good for getting into the trapezius muscles as well. Long breaths, soft in the belly and notice if you've changed your foundation, if you've changed your hip, Structure across the seat, whether you're leaning in one side more than the other, if you're lifting off one side and come up to centre. And just find that centre point again. And then taking the chin down to the chest again gently. Allowing gravity to release the fascia, 
relax the muscles across the back of the neck and then come up to centre. Now not everyone is comfortable with putting their head back for various reasons. So option one, tuck the chin in towards the chest, right in and then lean back. Option two, take the head up and look towards the ceiling. And again, we're just gonna breathe here. And it's quite an uncomfortable feeling taking the head back if you haven't done it before or haven't done it much before because we're so used to bringing the head forward and we elongate the back of the neck muscles and the front of the neck muscles are often tight. So it does often feel strange and can make you feel like you're compromising your breathing, which you're not. And for those of you that are comfortable, you can take the head right back Taking several breaths to allow the body to release naturally. And then come up to centre. We're gonna do that all again. And remember, super gentle. Like we're inviting a puppy or a kitten, a young animal to come to us. You wouldn't go and force a a young animal, you wouldn't force your energy on that animal, you'd invite it for a pat. So the same thing we're doing here with the body, we're inviting the body to join us to release. And come up to centre, and then the other side. The relationship between the mind and the body is like a relationship between two people. That's how I like to describe it. So you would want, ideally, for the communication to be clear, what you're asking the body to do. So the mind wants to do something here. It wants to release and relax through the neck and shoulders. And the body is responding. So you're asking the body. But in all forms of communication, we need a listening on both sides, don't we? Even if you're the one asking. So when the body responds to what you're asking, ideally, you want to be able to listen to what it's saying to you. Like, oh, that's a bit sore there, or be gentle here, or you can go a bit deeper, or don't go so far. Next, I'm going to use a yoga strap for the shoulders, but I'm not assuming everybody has one of these. So if you don't have a yoga strap, I'm wearing a scarf. If you've got a scarf around the place, you can use a scarf or a belt. It does need to be kind of long because we will be moving the arms out. So we're going to inhale, taking the arms up to start with. And as we take our arms up, squeezing the upper arms in towards the ears, and I'd like you to notice what's happened to your pattern of your seating structure. So have you dipped out through the lower back, push the chest forward and hollow the back. Have you dumped into the seat? Are you leaning onto one side more than the other? So we want to maintain the awareness of our body structure as we do everything here. And then bring it down, take it up again. And then moving the hands out enough to the sides, enough that you can take the strap behind you. And then back up. Now you might even want to film yourself here doing this because you will see the difference, the variation between your shoulders and how open, so we keep going back and forwards here gently, no forcing, taking the arms as wide as you need to to do this. So what's really interesting is the evenness across the arms and the hands and often when I, when I see people do this you'll get a one arm will lift up and the other arm. So if you've got a shoulder issue, obviously you're gonna have variations in the shoulders, but you'll also see the patterns that your body has through doing this movement. How one shoulder, when you're typing or doing your work, may be leaning in more than the other or if you're left-handed or what have you. So really interesting to view yourself doing this. And the first couple you'll feel like a, probably like a tin man making sure you're not hollowing the back, that you're drawing, you're picking up the pelvic floor, you're squeezing the core to engage your back muscles as you do this. For the first couple, you might feel like a tin man, and then after a few, you might start to feel the body becoming more fluid, but then the muscles getting a little bit sore. So the fascia 
the covering sheath that's underneath your skin that covers all of your body gets quite hard and sticky and like crystalline. So what we want is a smooth gliding fascia. So to do that, we need to move the body evenly and often to encourage it to release and open up. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been doing a lot of shoulder work lately, so my shoulders are really enjoying that and loving that process. We're gonna do a little bit more with the shoulders here. So you might or might not need to use a strap or a belt for this if you've just been using one. Keep it by your side for the next asana, the next uh, shape we're going to do. So this is called um, cow face and I'll show you front on and then I'll show you from behind because it's a bit tricky to see when I've got my arms behind me. So I'm going to take the, the left arm up and before I do anything I'm going to point the fingers towards the ceiling and focus my stretch from the left hip joint to the armpit, to the elbow, to the wrist and to the fingers. So lifting and lengthening, not leaning over or taking that arm over, keeping everything nice and straight, and then sending the hand down along the spine, elbow up. Now the first thing you need to do here and be conscious of is your seat and whether you've thrown weight into one hip more than the other again. But most importantly, this top arm, the elbow, doesn't push the head forward and make the body curl in. So you can move that elbow away from you so that it doesn't push the head and the neck. I don't want the head and the neck compromised at all here with the arm. And then the opposite arm swings back and you monkey grip, you hold on to the fingertips at the back of the body. So this is where you might need the strap and I'll show you from the back in a minute how I'm gonna do this. But if you can do this, maybe you even hold on to your clothes. Some people even just hold on to their clothes when they're doing this. So a reminder here that the top arm moves away and provides space for the head and the neck to be free. And you're gripping your hands towards the, along the spine, towards each other, and breathing. Have you lost your breath? Can you connect back with your breath? So I'll show you what this looks like from behind. So the one arm comes up, lift and lengthen, down along the spine. So my fingertips are hunting for my spine line. And then the other arm comes back. And if you can, the fingertips meet and you create a little monkey grip. Move that top arm away, give your head some space and breathe. So stay here for another breath or so and then we'll change sides. So now taking the right arm up and before we rush into it, remember we're getting the stretch from the hip socket, armpit, elbow, wrist and fingertips. Lift and lengthen. This whole part of the body here from the hip to the armpit to the fingertips is the heart and lung meridian in Chinese medicine. So we're opening up the breathing, we're giving the heart some energy here. So really good to remember to get this stretch in before we take cow face. Hands down along the spine, other hand comes to meet it. Joining the fingers, moving the top arm away, softening the breath. And just allowing the body here to feel the stretch. Using this time to quieten the mind and just focus on the movement. And release. So if you want to, you can stop this video and repeat that again. It is really beautiful to open up the shoulders because you get one shoulder inward rotation, the other shoulder outward rotation and you change sides. So the next thing I'd like to show you, actually two things that require the chair to be like this. The first one again is with a block, and I'm not assuming that everybody has a yoga block, but if you don't, they're actually not that expensive to buy. Uh, you can, I think you can even probably get them from Kmart or whatever, but I get mine from Lululemon, and they're about $20. Um, and you can use them for so many things in yoga, they're an excellent prop. 
So what I'm suggesting here to use the block for is to place the block on the chair. I'll move my arm away so you can see. So I've got the block this way, not, um, so I've got, so my back, my spine is along the narrow part of the block and the chair is along the other narrow side. So the block isn't flat, it's kind of up on its edge. And then I'm pressing my back into the block. And the position of where the block is is kind of up to you, but don't put it too far down on the sacrum. Make sure it's kind of the thoracic kind of lumbar area. And you should be able to feel the top of the block between your shoulder blades. And from here, I'd like you to tuck the pelvis under and then push into the block and roll the arms back. You may even hold onto the seat. So taking the arms back, lifting the chest, and taking some breaths here. Now these things are pretty subtle movements for us, but all of the things I'm showing you are the opposite of your likely patterns that you're using when you're sitting at a desk working. So if you can incorporate these simple movements into your day, even if it's just once or a couple of times during the day, your body will really thank you by the end of the day. And you'll become much less hunched over as a, as a human, <laughs> which we all want to be, huh? So the next asana is a twist. And can you see that I'm, before I'm even doing anything, I'm getting myself prepared by finding my seat bone, stacking my body. So we're going to place one hand, so I'm just turning towards you, which is I'm turning towards my left side, so my right, heart, right side is going to grip the bottom of the chair, and the left arm is going to come behind the chair. And so for some of you, maybe you even grab, you know, just whatever works for you depending on the chair you have. My knees are facing forward. I'm going to inhale to lift my body, and exhale to turn to look behind me. So the twists are really amazing for um, massaging the organs through the body and flushing blood through. So really good for detoxification. You don't want to be doing this if you've just eaten. You definitely want to have an empty stomach or at least an hour after you've eaten before you do a twist. So we're going to inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, turn to look behind you. We'll take two more of these. Inhale. Exhale. Really let the breath out. And when you let the breath out, suck the belly in and up under the ribs. And when you inhale, push the belly out. Exhale. So use the breath and the movement through the lungs to get the most out of the twist. And finally, you want to be turning your head and neck gently around behind you as far as you can go until you might even feel a pull of the tongue muscle down the throat here and up underneath the lower jaw, and then release. Find your seat bone again, evenness, bum bum, centre yourself, and then go to the other side. So knees straight ahead, inhale, lengthen, exhale to turn. Three more breaths, inhale, Exhale, two more breaths. Remember to let the belly push out and pull in. And release. And one last movement, which I'll do on the side as well because it's probably easier to see. It's called a seated cat cow. So placing the hands on the knees. Inhale, look forwards in the chest forward, arch the back. Look up, exhale, curl through the back, push the lower back and the middle back into the chair, pull the belly in, roll the shoulders forward, inhale, come up, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Beautiful. And one, one last thing. I know I've said that a few times now, but I just keep thinking of all these great things that are going to help everybody. 
when they're sitting at their chair. One last thing for the hips is pick up one of the legs, turn the sole of the foot towards the ceiling and gently push the other knee down. So I actually do this quite a bit when I'm typing, um, if I'm sitting in the chair for a long time. Just make sure that you use a timer or you're keeping watch and you do the same on both sides because you really don't want to get into the habit of doing, um, doing this one-sided. And this is a classic uh, hip opener, groin opener, really good to get the stomach meridian going here by opening up through the, the inner leg. If you're someone that crosses your legs, this really is a great change up for you. Uh, if you're used to crossing your legs and you've got that habit, change it up and do this. So turning the sole of the foot up towards the ceiling. You may even give yourself a foot massage here or putting the hand on the foot just to make sure you're feeling grounded and looking after your body. A really good way to connect with your body. So there you have it. There's some great things for you to do and to keep your body moving and energised. And the main thing with all of this is to never feel like you have to do these things. Like, you know, I've come in and I've given you homework or I've given you things that you have to do. I want you to feel like this is just so looking after your body and looking after your health that you want to do it, that you can feel the benefit of it. So please, the, the primary goal in all of this is to enjoy the process of moving your body, taking care of your body, because if you're telling yourself when you're doing these stretches, oh, that's right, I have to do the stretches, I have to do this thing, this is gonna, you know, this is what I have to do. You're really just setting up these really negative patterns in your head around how you think about yourself and your body and how you feel about looking after yourself. So please take care um, of your thoughts while you're doing these exercises and have a fantastic day or rest of the evening, depending on when you're watching this. Namaste, blessings to you in health and warmth.